Hey guys, this video is so important that you're going to need to watch and I even need Joey here. Let's get to it. Okay guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend, astronomy, science, and telescope. Yes. Good boy. Okay guys, so I am thinking of changing my travel telescope. And as you guys can see here on my left is what I've been using so far on two trips. And I, when I mean by traveling, I'm talking about airplane traveling. I brought this guy to Mexico twice. So that's there and back, there and back. Four different planes. Plus we on the last trip, we also did about seven bus rides in cities and it held up perfectly. So as you guys know, months ago or last year, I wanted maybe to go something bigger for the second trip. And I tried with the Celestron 8GN and it didn't work because it's too big, it's too heavy. Then the mount I needed for it was too big. And I know a few of you said, what about an eight inch SCT, right? Okay, you wanna turn around for all the fans out there? There you go. Okay, Joey, knock, go this way if you like. No, you're, that's it for you? Okay, anyway, let's continue. So I wanted to go to an eight inch and even some of you said, what about an eight inch SCT? but I didn't have one at that time and I just didn't want to spend any money and this one did really fine, but an extra two inches would definitely help. Now I am crazy and I'm thinking, let's see how the eight is gonna perform because in Mexico, getting to a board of one tour is virtually impossible. Someone that I know, Angeles is my fiance, who used to be more on the channel in the beginning, but once in a while you might see her. Her nephew, of course, that lives there, and she used to live there too, says a board of one or two are gonna be, uh, you know, there's probably gonna be up in the mountain top somewhere or in the woods or jungle or where they don't have uh, amenities or roads or anything like that yet. And you're just talking about dirt roads or, or something like that. So it's not gonna be accessible, okay? So probably the, the best you're gonna get is if, if you're lucky, like maybe a zone three or bottle zone three, or uh, I by the colors, it, it's a blue zone. A couple of the trips that I took, especially the first one, I was a, at a bottle four, and but it wasn't clear. Then the other part of the same trip, um, we went into a bottle five. Uh, it was okay with a six inch. But again, when I go travel with this guy, I'm not looking at the planets, okay? Unless somebody never seen Jupiter and Saturn or something like that, I'll show it to them. But really for me, I was looking at deep sky objects, okay? And it's okay-ish in a zone five, uh, a six inch, you know, type of thing. But an eight inch would collect about 50% about more light gathering power, which is decent. The one downfall, of course, with the, SCT type is that it's 2000 millimeter focal length. So usually when I'm doing deep sky object observing, I like a wide field of view. So like a six inch F5, eight inch F4. Um, well, I, I don't even know if I could fit that in the suitcase anyway, unless they made you know, a heritage eight inch F5 that then compresses into an F2.5 but the portability is also a key factor to go on an airplane. So this is very portable, six inches. You know, most people I would say carry small refractors, something between a 60 to 80, maybe a 102 if it's a short version, okay? Very few people take like a six inch or bigger. So I really enjoyed it and why I think I'm going this route, but I got to do a little bit more testing, okay? So let's let's look at it, okay? Here's the Heritage 8-inch F10 SCT. Now, as you can see, without this diagonal and visual back, so we're just talking about... We're just talking about going on the plane, okay? When I'm there, I can put the visual back and the finders and all that, but it's practically the exact same size. Practically no difference. We're talking about half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and that's just this focus. 
So they're practically the same size, weight-wise, nine pounds. This one, now Celestron SCTs are lighter than the Mead counterparts uh, for a few reasons, but we don't need to get into that uh, right now. Uh, so the SCTs from Celestron are lighter, and this one is 11 pounds, nine pounds, so it's only two pounds difference, but I'm getting two inches. You know, that's very good. Celestron HGN, that was 19 pounds before I took off the rings and tried to minimize it, but even then I got it down to 16 pounds. We still a lot more. So at 11 pounds, definitely doable. And I won't even use this finder scope. I'm not gonna use no six by 30. Most likely we'll just use my rye gel. And uh, so this will be eliminated too. And I think this time, instead, because this guy went in the suitcase and went, went didn't go on the carry-on and went under the plane, whatever, whatever they call it, you know. Um, so I don't know. I'm a little bit more worried because of the corrector plate. So I was able to use, I got still that blue inch foam and I wrap it twice. And even collimation is almost perfect, you know what I mean? So I think I'm gonna probably do the same, do two layers of this guy. And I'm thinking this one, because it's just a tube without, uh, you know, without the uh, visual back and finder scope and the diagonal, I can probably get that in a carry-on, right? Uh, it's the same size as this one. And th but this is a lot more expensive than this. So I'm kind of a little bit worried about the corrector plate, but this is the, what I'm thinking. And I'm gonna see is eight inches in a Bordeaux 5 zone, or if I go to a Bordeaux 4 zone, would just help me see that deep sky objects very well. Now, being the only thing I, I don't like for wide field viewing SCTs, even though I really like SCTs overall, because it's portability, is the 2000 millimeter focal length. The good thing is I do have a focal reducer, 6.3 focal reducer. Uh, I mean, it's gonna extend it a little bit, but it doesn't matter because that's only when I'm off the plane, I'm at the hotel. So I'll put a focal reducer and a two inch eyepiece and I'll probably bring my 31 millimeter, 82 degree field of view, maybe even my 56 millimeter eyepiece. Because some of those deep sky objects I want, I need a big field of view if I only have one telescope. So. With that, I could probably bring it down to 1300 millimeter focal length. Um, it's still more than this one at 750. Um, it's about 50% more focal length, but I'm hoping the two inch aperture more is going to compensate the focal length uh, type of thing. So we're gonna try it. And we're gonna see how I like two inches more. I don't think you can go much bigger. I mean, maybe. Maybe you can go to a nine and a quarter inch SCT. There's no way a 10, 11 or 12 inch would go on a plane. But a nine and a quarter is a little bit more than this. It might also fit in the suitcase. It might also fit in the carry-on. I don't know what size it is. If you guys have a nine and a quarter, tell me what size diameter it is and the length. If it's not too much bigger, I could consider that in another year or so, if I think that the eight is still a little bit low, but I do have another thought that if this doesn't work and then I still need more aperture because it to like a Bordeaux one, two and probably three, uh, most likely. So going to a four zone is good, but I want some aperture. Now there is another telescope that I'm thinking that is way bigger in the 12 inch size that can fit in a suitcase on a plane, or we'll talk that about that on another episode. Now, the only thing is, you know, I wasn't looking for rock solid steady thing. Normally, when I look for like rock solid, I am looking for, uh, like I'm looking at the planets so I can zoom in and I want more, more steady views. When you're just looking at a little galaxy or two or a nebula, you don't need normally need to push the power as much. Uh, so low to medium power, uh, I think. With this guy, I brought the Celestron Omni AZ mount that's on the side. Uh, I'll put a picture. It's undermounted for this guy. 
But again, I was just looking for deep sky objects from the low to medium power. I didn't need anything rock steady. So that was very lightweight. That tripod and mount is five pounds. This is nine. Being that this is 11, two inches more, that's great. Uh, and if I can do the focal reducer thing and a two inch eyepiece. Now, I just need to know, I, I can't use that Omni AZ mount on this guy. It's, it's just, it's three times the cost of this guy and I don't want anything. And I, I definitely, it's gonna shake more. Even though it's only two pounds more, more vibration than it's acceptable. So I gotta kinda see what is gonna be good that can handle this guy, but keep that weight low, okay? So altogether, if this was nine and the tripod was a five, you know, you're talking about 14 pounds in total. So let's see, I do have the SV Boney 225 AZ mount. That can probably handle this. Again, might not be rock solid, but I don't need rock solid. The tripod I have for that is way better than the thin tripod that came on the AZ Omni mount. So I gotta see how much that weighs because I'm already two pounds more. This guy, I was using the Starsense on here. That really helped. Now, I'm not gonna drill no holes through here, an SCT. Uh, it's too it's it's too expensive. I'm gonna kind of see if I can adapt something in here, or I buy the SCT uh, Star Sense version, and uh, it's a lot more expensive than the phone version, right? But uh, I could go that way too, unless I can adapt it somewhere up here. I'll have to see. Uh, okay, guys, that's it. So I think I'm probably gonna put this guy for sale. It served me very well. Uh, for two trips and about seven bus ride trips too. The downfall is the focuser. Uh, the shroud is really no big deal. And what I used to do is my protector that used to protect it was the shroud for it anyway. I, I guess that's it. Uh, this guy's just two pounds more, two inches more. And uh, I'm gonna try it out and see how it goes. Let's see what tripod I get next and if it's gonna be okay for this guy, and we'll be back.